The venerable Taurus Model 85 is a 5-shot, 38 Special Snub Nose revolver, and it's been one of Taurus's bread and butter products for a long time. Recently, the Model 85 was phased out and replaced with the 856, which is identical in all respects to the 85, except it has a 6-shot cylinder. Like the Model 85, the 856 is available with either a steel frame or in an ultralight alloy framed version. It can also be had in different color combinations with a spurred hammer or with a bobbed hammer. The standard Model 856 isn't all that interesting on its own. It's a Model 85, but 20% better thanks to that extra round. The Taurus Model 85 Ultralight was one of the first handguns I ever bought. I used to carry it regularly, and it's always been good to me. I'm not going to rush to replace it with an 856 because I don't carry it very often anymore, and what's one round of 38 special between friends? Plus, I have some sick custom grips on my Model 85. Just don't ask me how I got those on there. It wasn't fun. But the gun we're talking about today is the Model 856 Defender, a souped-up 6-shot 856 with a longer grip, an extra inch of barrel, and factory night sights. The Defender is offered in a few typical configurations like the base 856. Steel frame or alloy frame, black or silver finish, pretty typical stuff. But this one is one of the really cool configurations, with black and gray G10 grip panels made by VZ Grips. There's another version with a tungsten gray Cerakote and super slim Altamont grips. I'm not much of a revolver guy, but even I think these look pretty cool. This model of the 856 Defender is the heavyweight version with the steel frame, weighing in at 25 ounces. That's a full half pound heavier than my old Model 85 Ultralight, but the Defender has an extra round in the cylinder and a 3 inch barrel instead of the snub's 2 inch. And even at 25 ounces, the heavyweight Defender is very light and trim. This EAA Windicator snub nose has a 2 inch barrel and weighs in at 29 ounces, and just look at the difference in girth. The Windicator is an absolute ham planet compared to the Svelte 856. There's a weird tendency in the gun community to recommend tiny ultralight revolvers to first time female shooters. Full House 38 Special Plus P defensive loads out of a tiny lightweight revolver, like my old 85, are stout. The 856 Defender would be a much better choice. More grip means more control. A longer barrel means better performance with 38 Special, which is already on the border of acceptable self-defense cartridges. And the extra weight tames recoil and makes practice sessions less painful. If you think it's hard to get your mom or girlfriend to the range as it is, an ultralight snub nose in her purse is just going to make it worse. I shot the Defender alongside my old Model 85 and the Windicator, mostly using 38 Special FMJ target loads, but also using a few cylinders of Remington Green and White Box 38 Special Plus P 125 grain semi jacketed hollow point. This turned out to be a pretty good comparison. All three guns have a full grip and come in at three different weights. When shooting for speed, the weight definitely makes a difference. The old Model 85 is a handful with the Plus P defensive loads. The Windicator is the softest shooting, but it's the heaviest gun and has the biggest, softest grips. The grips on the 856 Defender are high traction and keep the gun from rotating in the hand, but if you're after comfort, you'd be happier with the rubber grip versions. I tested the 856 with a 6-shot HKS speed loader and found it a little harder to load quickly than my Model 85 or the Windicator. This is a small gun and you're fighting against the cylinder latch and the grip panels to get that speed loader in there. I rarely carried a speed loader with my Model 85 anyway. I usually went for speed strips. I prefer to sacrifice a little speed for a little extra control, plus they carry super flat in a pocket. On to the accuracy. I also shot groups with all three revolvers. So here we have our collection of groups shot from five yards, single action. This is the 856 Defender using the uh, flat point FMJ. This is the 856 Defender using uh, semi-jacketed hollow points. Up here is the Windicator with the FMJ, down here Windicator with the hollow points, and in the center is a five-shot group from the uh, Taurus 85 Ultralight. This is one of my old guns uh, using the 125 grain semi-jacketed hollow point. Of the three, I got the best groups with my old Model 85, which is not surprising. The trigger is well broken in on that gun, and it's extremely smooth. Plus, I've been shooting it for like seven years. The sights are also the most precise. That silver front ramp and silver rear notch is not a high contrast sighting arrangement, but for slow fire groups, they are precise and on target. The Windicator has the same crisp sighting arrangement, but in black. This gun used to belong to Jamothy J. Revington Esquire, and it's been shot a lot, and frozen in dry ice, and probably soaked in fruity white girl beer. The trigger feels like dragging a pillowcase full of cinder blocks through an Olympic-sized swimming pool full of broken glass and rose thorns. It still turned in better performance than the 856 Defender, so let's try to figure out why that is. 
The Defender's trigger is gritty and imperfect, even in single action mode. I know from experience that it will break in over time with a little dry fire, but it's not there yet. The Defender also has an Ameriglow front sight blade, a tritium vial surrounded by dayglow orange, and the same rear trench sight as the other wheel guns in this test. These sights are high contrast and quick to pick up, and night sights are a great feature on a self-defense firearm, particularly a revolver you can't put a weapon light on. For defensive shooting, I love these sights. For precision shooting, they're awful. Let's see if Hop at the Range can elaborate. So I'm trying to decide how to hold my sight picture. The front sight blade is pretty long, pretty tall vertically. So if you hold with the top of the front sight, even with the tops of the rear notch, you basically can't see most of the sight, including the tritium dot. The tritium dot gets like three quarters of the way covered by the, uh, the rear trough. If you try to hold it in such a way that the tritium dot is centered between the rear notch, that gives you a, a second possible sight picture. And then finally, the third way would be to try to see the entirety of the orange front blade between the rear U-notch. So you kind of have three possible sight pictures. I'm not really sure which one is the expected sight picture. So I'm gonna go ahead and shoot uh, with the tops of the sights flat because that seems like the most logical to me, even though it would make the tritium sight a little less useful. Just to satisfy my curiosity about those sight arrangements, I went ahead and shot three two-shot groups. I don't know if two shots can be considered a group, but that's not really what we're testing. First group was at the left of the diamond. Second group was at the center of the diamond. Third group was on the right of the diamond. I'm sure you've probably already guessed what's going on here. The ones on the left is with leveling the front and the rear sight, tops of the sights. This is with uh, trying to get the whole of the tritium vial visible between the rear notch. And then this up here, turns out this is actually kind of difficult to do. That is getting the entirety of the orange rectangle that's on the, on the sight blade, getting the whole front sight blade visible between the U notch on the rear. So obviously this is more how you're supposed to shoot it. If you try to get that whole tritium vial visible, you're gonna be shooting significantly high at five yards. Thanks Hop at the Range, that was unusually cogent for you. So if you're shooting groups, you aren't really getting the full advantage of the tritium vial and the dayglow orange front blade. If you're shooting for speed though, you can kind of use the front sight like a redneck EOTech, just shotgunning across the top of the blade, both eyes open, aiming at center mass. If you hit a few inches higher than center mass at the 7 yard FBI mean average distance for self defense shootings, you're probably still going to ruin someone's day. Anyway, I really like the 856 Defender, and I don't normally say that about revolvers. It's a great intermediate size, still concealable and trim like a snub nose, but with a little extra utility thanks to that barrel and grip length. I'm not sure it's all that practical. I still carry my old Model 85 snub in a jacket pocket sometimes, rarely further than the mailbox though. The Defender's extra inch of barrel is definitely a good thing, and it's still easily small enough and light enough to be concealed. Sure, I could get more utility and more capacity out of a Glock 43, but there are some people out there who just like revolvers. They're not chasing the most effective, most practical setup all the time. I get it, I feel the same way about my 12.5 inch mid-gas AR. It doesn't do anything better than my other ARs, in fact it's kind of an unhappy medium between my shorter AR pistol and my lightweight 16 inch carbine. But I just like it bros. If you just like revolvers bros, then buy an 856 Defender with my blessing. That's our show guys, thanks for watching. DFB TV is supported by our sponsors Ventura Munitions and Top Gun Supply. Check them out, they would appreciate your support. We also are supported by our viewers like you via Subscribestar and Patreon. You can find links to both of those in the video description. We've also got a link to our Discord channel. It's a great place to be if you don't mind a little bit of anime and a lot of dumb questions. All right, see you next time.